$709 per month. That's how much more expensive life is now compared to two years ago for the average American family. Let's hear from Vance Ginn, president of Ginn Economic Consulting, about what this inflation means. Vance Ginn, thank you for joining us again. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Vance, what does losing an extra $700 a month mean to the average American family? It means a lot. I mean, this is something that's going to hit them in their pocketbook, and it has been for the last couple of years. Just over the last two years, the cost of paying for the average basket of goods and services that a typical household would buy has went up by more than $700, and their incomes have not been increasing at the same rate, which means that they're fall, starting to fall behind on their credit card bills, um, even their rent, a lot of other things that they wouldn't be able to pay for before. They're really having to make some tough choices each and every month. That's right. Yeah, there were times in my life where an extra $700 a month would have been uh, crushing. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, especially if you're a college student, you're fresh into your career where you're really just starting to get on your feet again, or maybe you have multiple kids and you're starting to get them back to school. Um, you're getting the clothes for school and the backpacks and everything else. This could be a really tough time. And unfortunately, you know, we've seen that inflation has started to have some disinflation. It started to slow down the growth rate, but it's still growing. It's still more than what it was last year, even if it's around 3.2% is what the latest consumer price index showed. Um, so we're still seeing a lot of hurt for many families across the country. And Vance, what can families do to protect their money from the effects of inflation? Well, it, it's tough because, I mean, you've got to put food on the table. You've got to buy gas. Um, you've got to buy you know, clothes and everything else. Um, but what I would say is that if you have the opportunity to do so is to save, you know, save money, put money into a, a savings account or a, an investment account or something else. That way you have funds to live on whenever inflation continues to rise. Um, the other thing is, is to look for cheaper options. Look for the off-brand items at different stores and things of that nature, which a lot of people already have. And I think that's what more people have to do for a while until this inflationary pressure is under control. Now, what do you think needs to be done on a policy basis to give the average American family a leg up in, in the near future? You know, it's a great question. It's one that I think hope that many in Congress and the president and others are really considering right now. Um, and where I would start is at the state level. There's, it's difficult to get a lot of things done in Congress right now. So states should really bring in their government spending, not spending as much, cutting taxes, cutting regulations. That will help to unleash the private sector and allow for more production and supply. And at the federal level up in D.C., I mean, they've got to get their spending under control because that's racking up massive amounts of debt that the Federal Reserve, the central bank is then printing and putting more money into the economy, which drives this inflation across the economy. And so when you start really focusing in on this, we need less government spending, we need lower taxes, lower regulation, and less money printing. If we get that done, we'll get inflation under control and we'll have a, a more robust economy. Now, Vance, I found this kind of interesting. Investors are optimistic the Fed is done raising interest rates, at least for now. Why is that? I think part of it is is that they do see some disinflation, where inflation last year was around 9% year-over-year growth rate, um, and now it's closer to 3%. That's still above the, the Federal Reserve's target interest rate, or target inflation rate, which is an average of about 2%. So I think there's a lot more work that needs to be done. And while the Federal Reserve may not continue to raise interest rates, which is at 5.5% now, the highest in more than 20 years, uh, which is also hurting a lot of families in the process, um, they do need to cut their balance sheet. The balance balance sheet that they have is still around, you know, over $8 trillion, more than double what it was before the pandemic. And that is really what drives a lot of the inflationary pressures in the economy. And so I think that's something we really want to look at. Vance Ginn, thank you again for your time. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.